Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of Tech Talk. I'm joined uh, today with Kelly Lyons. Uh, Kelly, can you go ahead and uh, tell us a little about yourself and how you ended up at Walnut High School? Ended up. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this is my 22nd year at Walnut. Uh, I was actually hired originally straight out of college. I was very green. I had just gotten my credential and it was during a time where everybody had emergency credentials and I could not get one. I just, for whatever reason, and could not get a job. And I thought I'm going to, you know, have to just settle for a school. And so I had had quite a few interviews and uh, I was um, interviewed by Larry Holmes. And I remember being totally intimidated because to me, he was like eight feet tall. And, uh, but I had to grade an essay and I had to, you know, talk about why I graded it in front of a group of people that I had never met, very intimidated. And I was hired for academic foundation. So at the time, academic foundation was four classes, English, math, science, and history. And, uh, and then eventually it evolved into what it is now where math has been removed. So, and so anyway, so I spent eight years in academic foundation and of the teachers of that group, Jerry Knox is who's left. Uh, and one has retired and one has, I think, left the profession. So, um, and then once a bunch of English teachers started retiring, I used that as an opportunity to get out of AF so that I could teach them other classes because it was very constricting with my schedule and uh, moved up to the main campus because uh, AF is in the back. And uh, and then started teaching AP and honors and uh, still have freshmen, uh, but usually freshman honors. So and so I've been out of AF for a while now. Um, I think I know you were in AF my first year because I was always going to Smith's room and you were over yep. there. I think you left that first year because I think that's when Denise Greer retired. Yep. It was after my first year and then you left. Yeah. And I, I, I will say AF is why I stayed in teaching because you oh. had these teachers who were like, we were all on the same team. So, and not just on the same team because of what we were teaching, but they were all, you know, you know, I'm struggling as a new teacher. Um, well, let, let us help do this. Here are different techniques. And these were English teachers. So I had, well, Chuck Pratt was in the room of Dave's mm -hmm. room. Mm -hmm. And so he was actually my VITSA support provider. And so, yeah, I know, right? And uh, he is uh, very candid and just flat out said, you are doing way too much. And uh, I remember a few times he would call Larry to help get me some more resources because he felt like I needed more support. And so it really helped. But Denise Greer is the real reason because she was very nurturing. But yes. Yeah. Uh, I, a side note, I do think that's what makes Walnut uh, one of the more special schools. I, I know everybody likes to brag about their school, but I do feel like when you're a new teacher on here, you are surrounded by other teachers who will just flood you with help and information. And because uh -huh. I know what, when I started, it was Melanie Hildreth for me. It's like all of a sudden I have, oh, here's lesson plans. Sweet. Oh, here's the whole schedule syllabus planned out for me. Awesome. And then when Denise retired, uh, I got all of her Algebra 2 stuff, like literally. Oh, yeah like 15 binders worth of information. Yep. I'm like, wow, color, this is color coded and in plastic sheets. And <laughs> <laughs> it's because of her that I organize some of the things that I do. Cause I mean, everything <laughs> we color coded, everything, AF projects, the handouts were color coded. I mean, everything was organized. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. Wow, that's a little trip to memory lane for me. <laughs> um, okay. So last March, it's almost been a year now. Uh, we got that the notice. We weren't coming back. I know a lot of teachers were scrambling during that time. What did you do and what was the English department? How did you guys transition from, you know, in-person to distance learning last spring? Um, it's, it's hard to believe it's not quite been a year. It feels like it's been 10 years ago. Uh, originally, because at least for me, I thought it was temporary. I thought I, I'll, if I could just get through the next couple of weeks, we'll be good. Um, and our spring break was coming up. So I legitimately thought, we're, we'll go back after spring break and we'll start fresh and you know I'll be able to catch up. Uh, but once we had the meeting that said, no, plan on you know finishing out the year, uh, 
I definitely, for me, went into panic mode because I thought I have no idea what I'm doing. Plus, being at home uh, and trying to find space because I also have two high schoolers. Well, at the time, my youngest was in junior high, so she was finishing eighth grade. Uh, but they were going to school too. So trying to find three different spaces. And then my husband would be working from home at different times of the day. So between the four of us, you know, we're tripping over each other. So, and then we're hearing each other and, you know, and it was affecting just kind of my rhythm. Uh, but once uh, I, the dust settled, what I did like specifically for English is um, I was in 1H again last year. Uh, and so with the other 1H teachers, I reached out to them to see if our last unit for 1H is A Tale of Two Cities, which is a massive novel. So I first I'm like, well, we just won't do it. This is way too much. There, it's a hard novel anyway. So then I thought, well, what if we split it up? So um, Lisa, Donnie took a week. And so she taught a week's worth of lessons in her way and then sent it all to us. And then we released it to our students as well. So we were still the, you know, the keeper of the grade, but she took that week's workload off of us. And then I took the second week. Um, and then so he took the third week and then Janet finished the fourth week. And so that, and then we would touch bases throughout that process to see what was working, what was not working. That's when we were learning about, you know, you need to make a copy of things. Um, you need to make sure that you're sharing it to the right class because, you know, there were times where we would share it, but it would go to everybody's classes, but we wouldn't have access to it because we weren't the teacher. So a lot of trial and error for that one. And then my other two classes was AP and uh, English three. And English three, I honestly couldn't get anybody to show up, hardly. So, I mean, it was a class of 35. I probably saw seven total. So that was a class where I was just maintaining at that point. Um, I used a lot of Common Lit, which is a, a platform where it pairs um, poetry, short stories with novels, or um, actually just, it has very rigorous questions and it grades it. And then I grade the short answer. So that helped at least in my head, keep them accountable for something. And then with AP, because we have AP Classroom now, which is an online site that just started last year. It's like they knew. Uh, we, uh, Jennifer Mallets and I used that a lot to try and, pre and prep them for that because we had no idea what that was gonna look like. And so ultimately they wrote the essay online. So that was how we did it. But I will say for me, for getting the prep work done, because I mean, I was familiar with Google Classroom, but I used it to just post absent work. And teaching mostly honors and AP, absences didn't happen often. So it, you know, I was on it maybe once a day if that. So uh, one of the first things that I learned that I already knew immediately I was gonna love was Google Chat. That has been probably one of the best things because um, I like it way better than Remind. Uh, and I'm not even sure, I didn't think it's because it's just, it's, for me it's a little bit more user friendly, not that Remind is difficult, but Google Chat, it, I love that it records all of the assignments. I can do group chats. Um, I can send documents. It's connected to my drive. So everything is just very easy. Um, I've had students, um, you know, send me screenshots of things that they need me to see. It's just a lot easier because Remind, it, it doesn't have, at the time, unless it's changed, didn't have all those options. So that's the big thing I'm going to change or I'm going to keep. But the other thing is, is that I have a brother who is in the tech world, like he designs websites and so forth. So uh, I basically hired him and I said, this is what I need. I Because we were finishing The Great Gatsby for English 3. I said, this is what I need. I need to teach. I need to get it on lecture because they're not showing up to Google Meets. Uh, and I need to get something recorded so that that way I, they're getting some kind of lesson. So he, I gave him access to my Google Classroom. And so he learned Google Classroom. And then he suggested some things to try. And then basically I gave him my, well, I, I, I taught and then he helped me upload it and then had it all set to release when I needed it. 
So then once he did that, and he walked me through it every time. So then I was taking notes. So he was my live webinar, basically. And it was actually kind of refreshing because he's not in the world of education. So he came in with eyes that uh, helped me understand, like, okay, maybe this isn't as common sense as I think it is. Plus, uh, he definitely has a new appreciation for what we all do because he he said, I had no idea teachers did all of this. And I said, well, not usually to this extent, but usually it's, you know, brick and mortar with paper and a filing cabinet. Uh, I said, but yes, there is literally I'll come in. And I have stacks of papers ready to be passed out. And if I run out, I can go to the copy machine. And so uh, he trying to make it all electronic, he helped navigate that. And then knowing we were going to start this year online, I spent the summer signing up for webinars and uh, national board offered a lot of webinars this summer as well as AP. So, um, and you didn't have to be a national board teacher or an AP teacher to access everything. So I will say, much like Walnut High School, where we kind of, we do support the newbies, uh, the if I felt like the academic community was doing the same thing, like the, like I followed several Facebook sites that have distance learning as its uh, focus, and people just saying I did this and it worked, I did this it did not work, and so just reading people's I think I shared with you at the beginning of the year that I was following one and someone had shared your tweet. <laughs> on something. And I'm like, wait a second here. And it was like some like it was like I think it was connecting distance learning educators on Facebook. And it was one of the days Google had shut down like completely, which I mean, and you had tweeted Google was having a hard time and someone screenshot it and stuck it in there. <laughs> so, you, yeah, I'll get your autograph later. <laughs> um, I think. I think of all the disciplines that at, in education, I mean, it's just me as a math guy. I always think of English as uh, like the least tech use, like you just don't do it. It's like, here's your book. We're going to read it out loud. We're going to do this. Or here's an essay. I'm, I'm going to grade it by hand. You're going to write it, you know? So what has that been like um, for English and especially for you, you guys um, starting the year, knowing that now you have a whole year, of distance learning, how have you sort of reshaped your your the way you teach? Um, well, for one, we definitely don't do as much writing at all, um, and to the point where it um, it makes me very sad that I had to cut so much. But it it takes so long to grade on the computer. Plus, I've already been staring at the computer for Zoom for class. And then I was going home and trying to do more and my eyes were just, we're not handling it. Uh, it's gotten a little bit better, which I didn't want it to get better because I don't want to adapt anymore. <laughs> I want to be able to go back to, to different things, but, or to the way it was. But uh, I will say um, like for AP, you know, they, they, we still do timed writings. Uh, we actually don't use AP Classroom as much as we did last year because we found we Jennifer and I could be more effective with doing our own thing and still make sure that they get what they need. But like, for example, we use turn it in a lot. Most of the English teachers do. And especially when we want to make sure they're turning in original work, but turn it in is also faster to grade. Mm -hmm. Google classroom is not very fast to grade written work. And even with Cami connected to Google classroom. So if I'm checking annotations and if I'm working at home, um, I'll click on the assignment and then it slowly comes up and I click it and then I go to the next one. It's slow. So it's, I mean, it's like two or three times slower than if I had a stack of papers and can say, yep, that looks good. And, uh, that kind of thing. So, uh, that has been, so it's still just as much as we usually do with the, the workload, but yet it's less from the students. Plus, I have um, we have very full classes too. Mm -hmm. So, so you you mentioned Cami, turn it in. Um, wh what other sorts of things are you using uh, in your classroom this semester this year? 
I actually uh, wrote down some things that I've been using uh, pretty regularly. So um, every class, every prep I have, so the three preps, they have a Google slide agenda. So at the beginning of the year, I, I went on to see what kind of templates they had. So I found different ones and they're like notebooks. They look like actual notebooks. And uh, so every day, the this agenda will post at 7 a.m. of the day I'm going to have them so they could actually see what we're going to do. And occasionally I'll have students do the assignment. And I actually say, don't don't do it because you're what if I just what if I change my mind? What if I have to get rid of it or what if I have to adjust it? Because we I never know how long things are going to take. Mm -hmm. And so they ignore me, but then they just make more work for themselves. But um, it doesn't happen often. So that's one of the things I already said, common lit. I use actually use that a lot more than I've ever used. And partly because the questions really are rigorous. And so it makes me, now I can tell if they're actually reading the assignment. Um, turn it in, I use a lot. I use Cami for the annotating. Um, I do allow students though, when they're annotating to choose. So if they wanna go old school and do pen and paper, uh, then I'm totally fine with that. They do have to scan it as a PDF though. So, you know, the iPhones, they scan on their own, but I actually use Cam Scanner, which is an app that was recommended when we were doing National Board, and that has been the best. And it's free, but of course you can pay for the extra stuff. And it actually connects to my Google Drive. So when I, up, when I scan something, it'll send it to my Google Drive for me. So I can actually just go straight to Drive to get it ready for class. Um, and it puts it into a PDF. And then um, Jamboard is a new one I've used. Uh, the students use that more for pre-writes. So like we have T-charts um, for writing. And so I have like a template that I put on one and a lot of them will save that template. Um, and then they put their little virtual sticky notes on it um, like if we were in class. And then that allows them to upload it to Google Classroom so I can see their pre-write. But the newest one, that I've been using this semester is Nearpod. Mm. And the only reason I decided to try it is because at the end of first semester, Jennifer and I sent out a um, Google form uh, to the students asking them to you know, reflect on the things that we had done and what things had they seen in other classes that they think would work with English. Because again, we needed um, some information for national board. And so I was really focusing on that one question of what are other teachers doing that could work? And Nearpod kept coming up. And my oldest daughter, who's a junior at Benita, uses Nearpod. So over winter break, I made up some Nearpods and she came in as a student to show me what it looked like. And so that's what I was going to show you. So we've actually been using it enough. It's basically like a virtual... Um, it's a virtual collaboration. Well, there's different versions and there's a paid version where you get a lot more. Mm -hmm. But this is, so this was something from yesterday. This is from English 3. So I put them into breakout rooms. They had read an online blog about um, a professional, an NBA basketball player uh, writing. He's a white basketball player and right, uh, living in a, or working in an environment that is mostly black in the in the uh, climate that we're in now. So they had read it beforehand, they were discussing it, and then they had to come up with uh, what they you know took from it and they could use images. So this is what, so it was one collaboration board for all of the, uh, I'm not sure what that is, uh, for all of the breakout rooms. So it's as if they are walking up to my dry erase board um, so they could see what the other groups were doing. They just weren't in a big group. And no joke, uh, I popped into all of the rooms. And the last room I popped into, they were finishing up. And I heard a boy, which this is the one time they unmute themselves is when they're in breakout rooms. Because I can't get them to do it otherwise. But uh, I heard a student as he, they were finishing, I heard him say, I think we're done. And say, that was fun. Like, oh. no, like, not excited fun, but I mean, just said that was fun. So I'm like, is that a sarcastic or, but I'm going to take it for, because I needed that this week. I needed someone to tell me something I am doing was fun. And uh, he, and so, yeah, so, and it's, they're super easy to make. 
And so, um, and then I've used it for, I taught how to cite Shakespeare this week and last week. And then students, if they didn't do it correct, I'd let them come and redo it during tutorial. And I just made a new Nearpod, same assignment, but then I can label it so it reminds me these are the redos. So hmm. it helps me with organization too. That's that's actually really cool. Um, probably one of the first teachers that sort of highlighted Nearpod. So I'm glad that you uh, oh, talked about it. Well, they're offering it to us for free if we can get enough people to, during this uh, you know unprecedented times, I got an email saying if I could get teachers wanting to use it more, they they would do a free uh, lesson and then we get the, uh, you know, I think it was 45 minutes. We have to sit and listen to the spiel and then we get access to everything. I got a timeshare thing. I know, right? <laughs> 45 minutes, I mean, why not, right? I got 45 minutes. Uh, go ahead and forward that to me. I'll, I'll take a look at that. We might send that out to the staff. Well, um, the other thing that Nearpod does too is there's three options. There's live participation plus Zoom, where it will open it up in a Zoom, which I never mm -hmm. use that because I already use Zoom for class. Then there's live participation where they are on it, and then I can watch it on my computer and see them doing it. Like, and like if I post um, a Google slide that I've made, like a PowerPoint, which will upload into uh, that, I can add slides that'll make sure that they're paying attention to the PowerPoint, and I can time it. So that way, like if I gave a PowerPoint on themes from a novel we've read, and then I add a slide saying, write a theme statement, and then I put a little timer in there. They see the timer. They have three minutes to write the whatever many, much I want to give them. And then I can see the theme statements coming up. And then I can actually, it saves, and, and I get an email telling me they've saved it, Nearpod has. And then I can look at it at my leisure. I don't have to look at it right then. And then there's a student-paced option where they do it on their own time. And on the... Um, live participation, they can't change slides. Mm -hmm. So it only changes if I change it. So I kind of like that too. So, I mean, in my head, they're totally focused and paying attention to what I'm doing, uh, but at least it helps make sure that I'm trying to hold them accountable as much as possible. Yeah, the, the big the big thing is, is Nearpod versus Pear Deck. It's the, the sort of competition between the two. They oh, both yeah. have strength. It's like, if we could just take this, because my wife used a Nearpod for her staff meeting and she did the connect to Zoom right away. And it was seamless. It was just like, here you go here. And it just, everything started. So yeah, they both have their pros and cons, but I'm glad that you were able to talk about it um, today.